Cold War Zombies. This is a game that got me into COD Zombies and probably the zombies game I've played the most. I've done all the Easter eggs, most of the Dark Ops challenges, gotten round 100 on every map, and even unlocked Dark Aether a few times. But I realized I haven't done most of the side Easter eggs. So I decided I'm going to do every single side Easter egg in Cold War Zombies. Let's start off with D-Machina. Yes, that is how you say it. And yes, that will be the only thing I'll be pronouncing correctly going forward. Let's just get the Coffin Dance Easter egg out of the way real quick because it might just be the easiest and most well-known side easter egg in all of cold war after repairing pack-a-punch you just got to shoot five little glowing balls that spawn around the particle accelerator you'll find them at the top of the stairs behind this chair near the ceiling behind the particle accelerator and in this zombie spawn once you've shot them all, you'll be teleported to the Dark Aether and see the zombies doing the coffin dance. A meme that was dead before this game even launched, but it's still pretty cool as a side easter egg. But when they're done, you'll be able to open the chest that they carried over that guarantees a Juggernaug perk drop, some salvage, and a random weapon drop. This random weapon drop can be anything, and if you're lucky as shit, you can get the wonder weapon. Our next egg is the Deadwire Satellite. First, you want to pick up Deadwire, obviously, and you want to look out for a few satellite towers around the map. The first one is located in spawn, and you just got to shoot that thing until it faces knocked and you'll know you did it right when a little blue light goes off underneath it and you're going to want to do this to each satellite the next one is near the crash site i recommend using a weapon with a scope on it because it is far as shit away and the last one is over near pond once they're all facing the right direction they'll send some electricity over to the antenna on top of penthouse and it'll drop you 1500 points i only recommend doing this if you're already planning on using deadwire otherwise it'll be a waste of time and points also if you listen closely to this radio valentina is going to start saying some numbers that are supposed to be for a cipher, but her ass is not a double XL freshman, so I just tuned that nerd shit right out. Next, we got the floating zombie Easter egg. This one is super simple. Every time you head to the Dark Aether, you just gotta look for and shoot a few zombies in specific spots. There's one near spawn under this jellyfish, one in pond floating up by the trees, one over by the crash site above the tail of the plane, one floating off in the red area of the particle accelerator, and the one I think is the hardest to see is in the water underneath the area that leads to the speed cola room. And if you don't see some of these zombies, don't worry, they'll spawn randomly, but if you go into the dark aether enough, you'll get them all. But once you've shot them all, another zombie will spawn above pond. If you shoot it, you'll get a free kill streak. But if you don't and happen to run under it, this happens. The last easy Easter egg on D-Machina is the music Easter egg. You just have to collect the three tapes on the map. The first one is in the fridge in Noct. The second one is under the particle accelerator on top of this crate. And the last one is in Medical Bay on this shelf. After you grab them all, Alone by Kevin Sherwood will start playing. But if I show that here, you two will come kidnap me and hold my family hostage. So here's just a few seconds of it. Now that all the baby easter eggs are out of the way, we can move on to more difficult ones, and surprisingly, they both involve Orda. The first one is the Orda's hand easter egg. I'm not gonna lie, this one is a pain in the ass to do, but it's kinda cool looking. To do it, you gotta head into the dark aether and make your way to med bay and look into this zombie spawn. Once you're there, you gotta shoot the red buttons in the hallway next to each of the doors. You'll know you did it right when the green light shines through the glass window on this door. Next is the tedious part. You gotta shoot the button next to the glowing green door in Orda's gluttonous ass will reach his hand out and slap and grab any zombie walking in front of it. But the timing for this is weird so I recommend having death perception so you can see the zombie spawning and get a better idea of when to activate it. I also used any tactical that could distract the zombies as well as aether shroud so I could attempt it without getting down. And after activating it, I head up the aether portal then right back down to reset the spawns to get it done faster. To be honest, I don't really know the exact number of zombies that Orda needs to eat or whatever he does with them to get it done, but you'll know you're done with it when a particle effect flies over to your weapon turning it to legendary tier. In this clip my weapon was already purple tier but regardless of your current weapon tier it'll fully upgrade your weapon to legendary. The last egg on D-Machina is the Orda round 40 easter egg. This one isn't that tough if you're comfortable with going to higher rounds. All you gotta do is play until round 40. It doesn't have to be specifically on round 40 but any round on round 40 and higher will work. Once you meet the round threshold you have to go down into the particle accelerator and spend a minute 15, 115, down in the particle accelerator room then head to the dark aether if you did it right once you enter the dark aether your screen should start to shake now head on over to the pond and look out towards the trees and you'll see the big fucker wandering around now let's follow orda on over to firebase c we'll start this map out with the bunny easter egg after you turn on power go up the stairs next to pack a punch and look down the little hallway of clutter near the end there will be a bunny sitting there and all you gotta do is stare at it 
After it turns to look at you, if you don't push out and keep staring at it, you'll be teleported to a dark jungle. In this jungle, pink glowing bunnies will spawn around you and you just gotta shoot them. If you get close enough, there's a chance that a zombie will run under it and start dancing. Once all the bunnies have been shot, a chest will spawn. This chest is similar to the coffin dance chest and it guarantees juggernaug, some salvage, and a random weapon drop that can also be the wonder weapon. You can upgrade the monkey bombs on Firebase C. This one's actually pretty simple unless you're a dumbass like me. All you gotta do is get 50 kills using monkey bombs near an Aether reactor, but it has to be the one near Peck. I also recommend using Mule Kick if you have it tier 5. You'll get a chance to get multiple when you craft it and hang on to it when you use it. And I just want to point out that when I was doing this, the guide that I watched said I can do it at any reactor and I spent 40 minutes getting kills at the one near Colonel's office for absolutely nothing to happen. But anyways, once you get the 50 kills, your monkey bombs will have a red aura coming from it, the zombies surrounding it will dance, and the bombs will do more damage. Also, if you listen closely, it'll play a different song before blowing up. Speaking of songs, let's get the music easter egg out of the way. For this, you gotta find and collect three tapes. The first one is in the room next to Quick Revive on this shelf. The second tape is in Motor Pool next to the filing cabinet. And the last tape is on the shelf in the scientist quarters. Once you collect all three tapes, Lost by Julie Nathanson and Kevin Sherwood will start playing. And since YouTube will recircumcise me if I play the whole thing, here's just a few seconds of it. You can get a free perk with a little help from Sergei's decapitated head. You can find this poor bastard's head on any of the three Assault Wave beaches. Once you find it, bring it to the field hospital and set him down on the scale looking thing. Next, we need to do part of the main Easter egg, but I promise it's not too much. You gotta talk to Peck until he refuses to help with Maxis, then go speak to Rabinov, who will give you his Costco card. Take his card to the room next to Quick Revive, open the locker, and grab the first semen sample. The next sample is in engineering underneath the armor stand in the box spawn, and the last one is located in the locker in Colonel's office. Once you have these three, head back to the field hospital and mix all the semen samples together. This will spawn in some hellhounds, so take them out and then pick up the device. Once you have the device, head on over to the air vent next to the door leading to Peck's aether reactor and place it there. Then you can go watch Peck hallucinate while he inhales aerosol cum. Once he's done fucking around, head over to the data center and grab an essence trap. Don't worry, we're almost done. Now you want to weaken a zombie to low health, then throw and activate a trap near the weakened zombie. They won't be trapped if their health isn't low. If your weapon is already pack a punched and upgraded and is too strong to weaken a zombie without killing it, go ahead and grab a weapon off the wall to weaken them. Now, once you have your zombie in your trap, place it next to our boy Sergey. After the molly got him biting down, head over to the colonel's office where you can now open a safe and grab a perk. But be careful because a shit ton of hellhounds will spawn after you do this. The last easter egg we got for this map might be the most useless and that's the free jump pad easter egg. I'm not gonna lie, this took me way too many tries so I got my friend Silky to actually complete it. Basically, you have to take all six jump pads at least once and go around to all of them until you find the one that has a green button on the pad. For this part, it's not required, but we found it useful to put the last zombie of a round into an essence trap. That way, no zombies can fuck with us for three minutes, making it so that it's just us on the map until the trap broke. But once you find the green button, stand on the pad and shoot it. Then you have to act like those dudes at every arcade and play a little Dance Dance Revolution. It'll show you what direction to step in on the screen, and if you do every direction correctly, it'll automatically launch you. You have to do this on every jump pad and if you mess up you have to end the round and look for the green button again. This took the both of us in our combined 30 IQ so long to get done you have no idea. But we found it was easier to look down at the jump pad and follow directions that way. And once you complete a jump pad successfully it will launch you in the direction of the next one you need to complete. There will be two jump pads near each aether reactor so just be on the lookout for what one has the green button. Once you complete every jump pad you'll be able to use them for free for the rest of the game. This is useless as shit. Moving on to Maori Toten, we'll start with the Aether Tool upgrade. To start this out, you just need to turn on power and activate Pack-a-Punch. Once you do that, head back to the spawn room and in the corner of the roof, there will be a file on the ground. I recommend having a weapon with a scope on it because some of the targets are pretty far away. The first one will spawn on the roof across from you behind the sign. The next one will be a few floors under that in the windows, then behind the sign to the right of that. Next one will be on the Dare D's Nuts building going across the windows. And the last one will be behind the Dare D's Nuts sign. After after you shoot them all, an Aether Wrench will spawn and you can upgrade your weapon by one tier. Now let's upgrade Klaus. Before we can upgrade him, we gotta build him first. You'll need to throw the Brain Rot Ammo Mod on a weapon and go up to room 305 in the hotel. This room has a boarded up door and once you Brain Rot a zombie near it, it'll bust that thing open. You can head inside and grab Klaus's hands off the neck of a man who died doing what he loved most. 
beating his meat. After this, you can head to the watchtowers near Pack-a-Punch and dig around until you find the satellite dish. Then you'll have to make your way to round 10 where a panzer will spawn, and once you kill it, it'll drop a battery. Now we have all the parts for Klaus, so head down the rope near the Wonder Fizz to reassemble him. Now here, I ran into a pretty rare side Easter egg where I aimed my scope at his penis and my game crashed for being a naughty boy. But if yours doesn't crash, you can command him through the radio that replaces your tactical and have him come over to this locker near the train tracks and have him punch it open. Go ahead and grab the black light that's in there and we'll put it to use later. For now, head to the garment factory under speed cola and repair the upgrade station with the dish that we found. Now have Klaus kill the zombies until you see the monitors on the upgrade station turn from red to green. Once they're green, you can have him enter the upgrade station by placing the command right in front of it. After doing this, you'll have to defend him for one minute. For this part, I use Frenzy Guard to help stop the zombies from damaging him and once the minute was up, he'll be upgraded once. And if at any point during this he fucks off and flies away, you can go up to any of the little yellow radios and call him back for 2,000 points once the cooldown is over. But while he's cooling down, you want to look around the map for these electrical boxes. This is where you'll use the black light that we grabbed earlier, and on these boxes, you want to find the two that have Klaus's face next to it. The box locations are as follows. Underneath the spawn in the fifth floor apartments, next to Stamina Up in the hotel, next to the train tracks near the door to Deadshot, in the maintenance tunnel right next to where we built Klaus, in the Dare D's Nuts building right next to the zombie spawn, and the last one is on the wall under the Cafe Mueller sign. Have Klaus punch open the two boxes with his face near them and grab the floppy disks that are inside. Once you get them, head back to the upgrade station and insert your floppy into it. This will upgrade him instantly into a goth baddie with a Pack-a-Punch 2 weapon, but we can upgrade him one more time if you put him back in the machine and insert your floppy. After this upgrade, he'll have the Ronald Ray gun outfit and his gun will now be Pack-a-Punch 3. Next is the sewer easter egg. This one is pretty simple. You just gotta throw nades in this sewer on the road near the bar. I recommend picking up Mule Kick if you have it upgraded because you'll get more bang for your buck for your lethals and tacticals. Also, stuns and normal nades work best for this. Once you have them, just throw them into the sewer and after a few throws, a guaranteed cashmere will pop out of it as well as some random salvage and sometimes a kill streak. You can do this a few times to get more drops and I even got a perk from it once. Next is probably the coolest bunny easter egg in the game with the bunny DJ. To start this, you need to find all the pieces of the torn up bunny around the map. I recommend being a little bit set up before you start this because it can get a little bit crazy. But you can find the head in the alleyway next to the Corber building. You get head in the alley. You're not slick Treyarch. The torso will be on a shelf right next to Wonder Fizz. You'll find an arm in sewer access across from the armor stand close to where you turn on power. An arm will be in room 304 of the hotel on a desk. One of the legs will be in the grocery store. And the last leg will be across the street in the bar in the booth close to Jug. After picking all these up, you'll be teleported to a club where the bunny will be DJing a set with all the zombies dancing until the beat drops and you'll have to fight for your life. You'll have to survive a few waves of fighting off zombies and some elites until the bunny finishes its set and leaves. After this, it'll let you choose in game show fashion which reward you want through three doors with a chance to get the wonder weapon behind one of these doors. If you don't end up getting it, don't worry. If you wait 50 rounds after the round that you complete this, go over to the end of the road near the bar. Out of the map, you'll see a building with colorful lights coming out of it, and that is the club that you were just at. And if you're 15 rounds past when you did it, there will be a bunny up in the window. If you shoot it, it'll teleport you back to the club, and after surviving the waves again, you can get another shot at the grand prize. And you'll know you got the grand prize when the Cerberus is floating above the chest in the prize room. There's also a music easter egg on Mauer de Toten. All you gotta do is collect the three tapes. One is on top of the mannequin and garment factory. The next is in the electronics store on a shelf. And the last one is in the Dare D's Nuts building on the dresser next to a vase. Once you collect them all, Amoeba by the Adolescents will start playing, and if I play the whole thing, YouTube will give me a vasectomy, so here's just a few seconds of it. One last easter egg on this map is technically not solved, but it's been driving me crazy. There's this painting in the spawn building that squirts out bubbles when explosives go off near it. No, it's not dust, those are clearly bubbles, and I don't know what they mean. Now on to Foreskin, the map that inspired this video because it is full of side easter eggs. The best side easter egg in this game is the Slenderman Perkaholic easter egg. To start this one off, you gotta have Lockdown lifted and head to the video store next to the arcade. Then throw a grenade next to the shelf and a VHS tape will fall over. 
Pick it up and bring it over to the TV store. Also, this part will be a lot easier if you have somebody holding a zombie for you. But pop the tape into the player and the TVs in front of you will start to flash in a specific order like the game Simon. When they're done flashing, you gotta shoot the TVs in the order that they lit up. This will happen three times, each time being longer and harder than the last. Pause. I personally write down the order that they light up. And to do this, I label each of the TVs with the number 1 through 4 going from left to right. So in this attempt, my order went 2, 1, 4, 3. Then for the second part, it went 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1. And finally, for the last one, it went 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 1, 4, 3, 2. I know it sounds pretty fucking confusing, but I'm really stupid and I still got it to work. So I'm sure with enough tries, you'll be able to get it down too. After you do it correctly, a TV will turn green and you have to walk up to it and activate it. Then this dude will spawn into your game. He'll slowly start coming after you periodically throughout your game and you'll know he's close to you if you start to get static on your screen. And just an FYI, he can move through any object on the map, so it's best to keep your distance because if he touches you, he will kill you. And by that I mean he won't just down you, he will kill you. He'll straight up rip you out of existence on some Cold War.exe type shit. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> he just insta-killed you. But that's not it for this easter egg. For this next part, you'll have to have Tombstone fully upgraded and pick that up as well as a weapon with a large clip. And I only say clip to piss off all the JROTC kids that will piss and shit that I'm not calling it a magazine. Anyways, take your happy ass over to the reactor close to where you fight the abomination that comes out of the portal. Once you're there, down yourself close to the reactor. The Slenderman dude will be floating above the reactor and you gotta shoot him. If you do it, he'll throw out his shadow clones and you just gotta shoot the one that has the glowing eyes. When I attempted this, my dumbass was on the second floor to start and didn't realize that there's bulletproof glass up there. So just make sure that you're doing it from the floor underneath. Once you get through the whole thing, revive yourself from your tombstone shadow and you will get a perkaholic giving you every perk in the game for free. The next easter egg is the Ronald Reagan pizza delivery. To do this, you need Aether Shroud fully upgraded and it doesn't hurt to have stamina. Head on over to the pizza shop near Main Street and head up to this door and Aether Shroud through it. This will send you into the back room where Ronald Reagan is waiting for you to deliver these pizzas. If you walk up and interact with a stack of pizzas, you'll pick one up and a timer will start for you to deliver deliver it. To deliver it, you have to run up the stairs through the teleporter to any town for all of these orders. The first delivery is in the video store to the right through the front window. One is in the movie theater to the left of the entrance. The next is in the bar that has Deadshot. And the last is in Burger Town, which is kind of fucking rude to be ordering pizza at a restaurant, but whatever. Every time you complete these orders, come back to Ronald Reagan and interact with him to receive your payment. After you've completed them all, there's a chance that he can drop the ray gun. But if he doesn't, I usually just kill him. We got a few weapon upgrade side easter eggs on this map for the SMG, pistol, and sniper classes. For the SMG upgrade, you need an SMG, obviously, and you start it by going over to this box by the pizza place and picking up this blueprint. After picking it up, targets will spawn in the pizza place and gradually will lead you almost all the way to the teleporter. Now, I got a good case of the dumb, so I tried rushing it and got a little close to the targets, but as long as you take them out before they disappear, you'll be rewarded with a tier upgrade to the SMG you're holding. Next, Next is the pistol upgrade. To start it, you need to head to any town and look in a planter for the blueprint. After picking it up, head to the window in the record store and shoot the targets that pop up. Most of these are pretty easy to spot, but there will be some up in the railing, so be sure not to miss them. Once you've shot them all, the pistol you're holding will be upgraded at here. The last weapon upgrade is for the snipers. You'll find the blueprint on top of the video store roof on this AC unit. These ones are a lot tougher to spot. First, they'll spawn on and in the building across from you, then make their way to the movie theater where one will climb up the side. Then on top of the wall behind the theater, the red building next to it in Burger Town. Then they'll spawn basically as far away as possible and climb up the back walls. And the last one will be sliding down the rope coming from Pack-a-Punch. After you shoot them all, your sniper will be upgraded at tier. Now we got some really fun side easter eggs with the arcade cabinets. But to do all these, you'll need an arcade token, which you can get from zombies dropping them, buying one for 10,000 points, or at the machine, you can knife it for one free token. Once you have a token, just pop it into whatever machine to activate it. Let's start with the Knocked Darren Toten cabinet. Activating this will teleport you into Knocked and start you out as if you were playing the map. 
You'll have only a 1911 and a time limit will start. These zombies will all be one shot headshots, but if you run out of ammo, their health will reflect that of older zombies games and won't go down easy with melee. If you make it through these rounds, a chest will spawn at the end of each of them, giving you salvage and even a DMR to use. And if you can beat all the rounds before the time limit ends, a chest will spawn with lots of salvage, some points, and a full power power up that refuels your field upgrade. The next cabinet is the Dorizon Drac cabinet. Activating this will teleport you to the roof of the map where you have to fill up a dragon event rocket from Outbreak, reminiscent of the dragon heads on Dorizon Drac. Once you complete it, you'll get a chest similar to some of the bunny easter eggs and it'll give you salvage, some lethals and tacticals, a random weapon, possibly a perk, and a full power power up. There's also an enduro cabinet. When activated, it'll send you into one of the storefronts as an RCXD. In there, all you can really do is grab points, but I can't drive these things for shit on keyboard of mouse so i basically got nothing but if you're nice with it you can come out of this with a few extra points and there's one more cabinet that you can activate only if you have fully upgraded phd this one is only really good if you have another player to do it with but above the bar in the storage room there's an arcade cabinet with a tarp over it if you have your teammate wrangle a zombie over near it and jump down from the roof killing it with your phd explosion it will turn on to activate it both of you need arcade tokens but simply interact with it and you'll be racing rcxds through any town for a three lap race and this race is obviously bullshit since I lost, but it's still a fun little Easter egg to do with friends. And lastly, we got a two-in-one Easter egg with the Bubby and Music Easter egg. For this one, you need fully upgraded PhD and maybe even upgrade stamina up so you don't take fall damage. And also, it doesn't hurt to be set up a little bit because this can get tough. But in any town, there are some explosion marks on the ground that you gotta jump onto with PhD. And when you do this, either an Aether Bunny will come out of it or a power up. The spots are as follows. One over by the video store under the bridge, just climb onto these boxes and jump onto it. Another in front of the movie theater, but it takes some dumbass skill jump slide bullshit from the top of the TV store to hit it. And one on the other side of the rubble in front of the TV store. Just jump off the roof of the bar to hit it. Once you have the bunny, head over to the mascot in front of Burger Town. His name is Bubby, by the way, and spread him wide open and insert the bunny. Once you do that, you'll have to defend him for a few waves of zombies while he squirts out burgers. Sometimes when I do this Easter egg, it's hard as shit and he dies instantly. And other times it's a cakewalk. Once you've defended him, he'll spawn in a chest with a bunch of good shit in it, and in that chest will be a tape for the map's music easter egg. Pick it up and it'll play Samantha's Ballad, and you already know I can't play more than a few seconds of this without getting pegged by YouTube, so here's a snippet. But that is all of the side easter eggs in Cold War Zombies. At least for the round based maps it is. Let me know if I missed any in the comments down below, and while you're down there, like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, sub if you're new, you guys know the drill. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.